One of the most popular stories in League of Legends lore is how Azir gets betrayed by Xerath during his ascension ritual. But what if Xerath did not betray Azir? Before we begin, a quick summary of the lore after Xerath betrays Azir kind of goes like this. After Xerath betrays Azir, Azir goes into a deep slumber as his mind and body have separated and Xerath is about to get crazy power from the ascension ritual. However, Narsus and Renekton come to the rescue and start fighting against Xerath. They can't really beat him but their plan is to trap him inside a sarcophagus. Obviously Xerath doesn't allow it but for for a short amount of time, Renekton is able to push Xerath inside the trap, but the only way to keep Xerath inside is if Renekton stays with him. So Renekton forces Narsus to shut the seal and trap both of them inside, and Narsus ends up doing this. Cool, so Azir is vibing in a sleep, Xerath and Renekton are fighting 24-7 inside the seal. Let's skip some time. Severe and Cassiopeia go chamber hunting. They arrive at a tomb and Cassiopeia betrays Severe and ends up freeing Xerath and Renekton from the chamber. Renekton is obsessed with fighting Narsus and Xerath is happy he is alive. Side note, Renekton hates Nasus because inside the trap, Xerath convinces Renekton that Nasus trapped him out of jealousy. Because of Cassiopeia betraying Severe, she is bleeding and ends up dying, but her blood resurrects Azir and then he comes back and revives her. He then fully ascends himself, makes an army and wants to get revenge on Xerath. Okay, so the summary is done. I want to mention for this video, I will focus on interactions with Azir or from him directly. Shurima is massive and too big for one video. All right, let's analyze what would be different if Xerath did not betray Azir. Let's start off with the easy stuff, which is Azir would have never lost his emperor status and not been thrown in a slumber for thousands of years, and Xerath would also remain at his side. Kinda obvious, but what would happen next? Well firstly, I believe Shurima would expand his empire. As it is mentioned many times, Azir wants to expand the technological advancements of Shurima to other places, because he genuinely feels it's going to benefit everyone, especially as Shurima is in his golden age. They are thriving as a nation, and we know this because Narcissus' one issue with Azir is that he feels he is overcome confident and cocky. And someone who is like that will most likely expand their influence. And from a map perspective, the closest countries to Shurima are Piltover or Zorn. So imagine a Piltover with an Egyptian desert style city instead. But this is where it gets kinda evil. How do we know Azir expanding his empire will be done in an ethical way? Let me explain. Azir could become so obsessed with creating this utopia, but becomes unaware of the evil he is doing in the process. A really good character to compare this to is Fire Lord Sozin from Avatar The Legend of Anne. He has a similar belief in expanding the Fire Nation's prosperity. Our nation is enjoying an unprecedented time of peace and wealth. Our people are happy. We should share this prosperity with the rest of the world similar to Azir. He is also very confident, as we know Azir is too. And honestly, I can believe this happening because Sozin himself in Avatar is not directly involved in every war or conquering of every nation. He has his soldiers do it for him. I think this will be the case for Azir, who would guide his armies in safely occupying a nation to expand his nation's prosperity. Another reason as to why I think Azir would be okay with this is because of him not abolishing slavery. Yes, we know he has the intention to do so, but he hasn't done it yet. How can an emperor not get something done? Is it because he wanted to get his goals finished before he does it? A similar idea could work here. Azir would not kill anyone once he has his utopia, but he is okay for killings to happen in order to get his utopia created. Yes, in the end, he does want a perfect world, but how far is he willing to go to get this done? Furthermore, there are other characters who would be impacted by Azir, such as Sivir. Sivir would either not exist, and if she does exist, then she would end up dying, because she gets backstabbed by Cassiopeia and does actually technically end up dying and it's only because Azir resurrects that he brings her back to life but if he was never there she would be dead. I also want to talk about how Azir would impact the Darkin and Void War. Let's begin. It is worth noting the Void War happened before Azir was born. Well the main chunks of it. I'm going to summarize what happened in it. Basically Shurima took over a place called Akathia. The Akathians wanted their independence. There was a constant beef between Shurima and Akathia. Shurima treated Akathians like and one day an earthquake in Akathia created a void rift. The Akathians kept this a secret. I'm going to skip details, but Sijax, an Akathian who later becomes Jax, kills a Shuriman Ascended Warrior. This pissed off the other Shuriman Ascended Warriors and they charged against Akathia. People like Aatrox are in this army against Akathia. Okay, so the Council of Akathia, as they are being attacked, accidentally opened the void rift. This releases massive amounts of Voidborn and causes a big disaster. Big fights happen between the Voidborn and the Ascended. 
ended and a lot of the ascended warriors die or lose and become mentally tortured. Skip some time, an ascended warrior called Harok and other ascended warriors are able to stop the void from spreading. Harok creates something called the nether blade and he goes inside the rift and stops it from the inside. As a result, they are able to seal the rift at Ekathia and the void stops spreading. However, Ekathia is now destroyed and Shirama abandons them. Okay, so how is this relevant to Azir? Well, the void war begins in 2500 BN, but ends in 2000 BN. BN is before Noxus. Azir was born in 2040 BN, near the end of the war. After Azir dies, we have the Darkin War. The Darkin are corrupted ascended warriors who were traumatized by the horrors of the Void War, as well as self-infliction by the use of blood magic. There ends up being a war between the crazy Darkins and all of them eventually get sealed into weapons. So what impact would Azir have had on the Darkin War if he was alive? If Azir was alive, they would have had an emperor to defend and not feel purposeless, especially as the purpose of the ascended was to protect Shurama and most likely Azir could have provided them with the guidance to not get into evil like blood rituals etc that would drive them even further insane. This is important because this would have had a major impact on the Darkin War. The Darkin War is super scary as a lot of innocent lives died as a result of it. But if the Darkin War did not happen, then we would not have had needed intervention by Maisha. She's the aspect of Twilight who helps a lot in trapping the Darkin in weapons. And also, a lot of the Ascended would have been alive. Many of them are killed in the process by Maisha and her friend Tanari. I also believe Azir would have used all these Ascended warriors to achieve his perfect utopian world, also known as spreading Shurama's technological advancements. Secondly, Many champions would not exist and other timelines would be impacted by the Darkin War if it did not happen due to Azir being alive. I mean Aatrox, the sword version, would not exist and he was the one who killed the original Aspect Pantheon. Cain wouldn't feel super confident in himself against Zed, but these are theories I could go on about all day. All in all guys, this is my belief on what would happen if Zerith did not betray Azir from Azir's perspective and how Azir himself would impact other people and other big events in the League of Legends timeline. Thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed this video, they do take time to make so a like, comment and subscription is appreciated. Have a good day.